I'm really happy to see everybody. Uh, hey, Dee Marie. Um, who's here? Myra's here, and Sue, and Kristen, and Raffle Waffle. I love the, the, the Quilt Nerd Thursdays as well. WFH, what does that mean? Wait a minute, don't tell me. I don't know, but I want to know, and I, and I like it. Um, I do, very much. I like being here with you. Um, yes, Kristen, I am still naming colors on colornames.org. Um, it's been a minute, but every once in a while I'll just drop one in. How many did I say I had? Like over a thousand, right? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a little while, but I got to do it. Hey, Susan. Um, and okay, Pam Burrito, it's your first live. I'm so glad you're here. So, so we do the show for you today, you know? Anybody who's new, this is dedicated to you. Um, hang on one second. I just asked Eric to open the window in here, but I didn't want to yell, you know, into the mic. Um, Pam, this is great, this is great. Um, Faith, you know what? <clears throat> I mean, I, I caught a live stream this morning with my uh, favorite person. I was so happy. She was really good today, too. You know, um, She's always good, but some days are, like, really good. You know how it goes. Uh, so, uh, old comments in the chat window. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Um, I th is it better? Oh, yeah. Okay. I think it's, I think it's uh, caught up because uh, I see you telling me I, I look really nice. That's good. Yeah. The hair's, the hair's up. It was the best I could do with it, believe me. And I put on a little, I mean, I, I'm a little too made up for a Thursday morning, to be on. Well, I mean, I, it's nice. I don't usually, I don't usually do this, but you know, I'm on, right? The show must go on. Um, little Bird Stitch, good morning. Miss Eleni, hello. Yeah, you also are wondering, WHF, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's not WTF, not yet. Um, it's good to see you, Fiendor. How are you? How are you? What's your emotional temperature? Um, Sophie, if you're watching, I don't think you are, but no, you're at work, but, um, I owe you a text and I, I think about it every day, how I owe you a text. Um, Kristen and yeah, welcome baskets are in the chat for you, Pam Burrito, because that's what we do here. We give, um, we give some welcomes to the new folks. Uh, Nerdy Janice, hi. Quilt Nerd Deb, sitting here hand quilting and happy to see the notification come up. I've been trying to subscribe through Amazon on iPad and having no luck. You know what? I wonder if my IT department could help. Um, but I think sometimes, you know, the, speaking of the live stream that I watched, there, there was one, a couple days where somebody has mentioned on that stream that to become a member, yeah, you know what, this might be it, of her like membership thing on YouTube, you can't do it from the iPhone or something like that. So it could be that. So if you have another way, it might be, it might be a good thing to do it that way. But because I'm a Samsung girl. I'm an Android phone person. I just, one day it was iTunes, years ago. iTunes, I was like, I hated it. It kept updating. I couldn't find any of my music. iTunes broke me of Apple, and I haven't looked back. Much to the displeasure of everyone I know, certainly in my family, they are like, can you please get an iPhone? Because you're impossible. Maybe I don't want to be found. I'm pretty bad at cell phones. I don't know. Um, so let's see, Little Bird Stitch is here. Oh, look, and there you are. Mo just seconds, seconds later, you said the same thing. Subscription won't work on an iPad. Once again, I should keep reading the chat before I speak. Um, so in Karen, good morning. You know, it's noon for some people on the East Coast and it's 10 a.m. for others of you. And it's 11 a.m. for people in mountain time. You know, I was thinking uh, uh, very deeply about mountain time because mountain time, sorry, is what we'll be in at QuiltCon. And this has, this has implications for this show and the giveaway. We're doing a giveaway. I'll just start there. I feel like the, well, the hellos and the announcements and everything, seamless, seamless today. Um, maybe, maybe not, but, uh, yeah, there's a giveaway and I have to think about what time it's going to be, you know, in mountain time, central da da da, we'll have, you know, as the, as the date gets closer, we'll all be settled on when the giveaway is going to be, but, uh, it'll be a hundred shows, uh, when I, while I'm at QuiltCon, a hundred Quilt Nerd shows, amazing. I mean, I was like, should I do this? It's so scary. When I thought about doing it. It was like, it was a terrifying thing because, you know, I'm going to fail in front of everyone. There's no way to do a live show 
without actually doing it, you know? So it was like, this might be totally lame and no one will watch and I'll, it'll be like that thing that I tried, you know? And it'll be on the internet forever and how embarrassing, you know, to do a live show and then like not have it work out. But you know what? It's working out. I mean, I love it. Even if it's like us for the rest of, you know, eternity, I'm happy. This is a very good group. And so uh, I wanna give back to you and for supporting me and subscribing. Um, and I hope you'll subscribe. Um, yeah, I'll talk more about subscriptions in a minute or later. Um, but uh, you'll be entered into a drawing for a hundred dollars uh, gift certificate to Beyond Buckskin. So if you go to beyondbuckskin.com, I think, you'll see why you would want this. And we got to that, we found this place together through uh, investigating a quilt maker. Um, so go back and watch the show uh, that has Margaret Wood being featured, the little thumbnail on YouTube will show you uh, which episode that is. I can look it up too. But uh, learn about Margaret Wood and her life and her work, and then you will understand why Beyond Buckskin is the is the thing. So I'll, I'll have the computer draw randomly from the list of subscribers uh, at any level. And um, yeah, and I'll announce it from Phoenix in, in the mountains, in mountain time. Uh, somebody will, will get that. Um, I can't wait, it's gonna be really fun. I want to do more giveaways just because it's really fun, you know, to do them. I'm sure you all feel the same way. Um, let's see. Let's see. A nun maker working while listening. Excellent. Excellent. Holmes is here. And Bip is here. Um, Myra's getting ready to go to work starting at 1030. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excellent. Half and half. Um, the show is on Twitch. It was on YouTube live streaming for a hot minute. But the show, the network that we're on is Twitch, but all of the re, uh, the recordings will always be on YouTube for you to watch, and I hope you do. Um, let's see, let's see, who have I not said hello to? I think, I think I'm getting there. Raffle Waffle, yeah, okay, yeah, I said hi, all right, all right. Sitch and Deb, good morning. First time chat, really? Welcome baskets, welcome baskets are, 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 uh, are requested. Miscellany's already on it. Um, a hot date with Eric, my husband is home, and I'm thrilled that that is true. Uh, he's just my favorite person, you know. Uh, new Elizabeth, good morning. Crazy Coulter, happy Thursday to you. Uh, it's a good day. Um, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a great day. Rusty Cat, I mean, come on. Rusty Cat's here. Pat is here. You're going to miss some of the show. You have to drive. I mean, it's, so here's the other announcement. Yeah, come on. I think Eric needs to open the window more. Why don't I do it every time? Because, you know, it's like I'm, I'm working under the lights. Uh, and I'm wearing a cashmere turtleneck. That could, that could be it. Um, the other thing is, the other announcement is that, you know, I've been thinking a lot about the schedule. You know, when I go back, hey Sohani, let me get, let me, I'm almost here. Sohani, hello, hello. Okay, proud, howdy folks. And I think that's it. Did I say hi to everybody? If I missed you, I did not do it on purpose and we'll catch you uh, during the show. So I've been thinking about the schedule. You know, we took a poll, we took a poll um about the schedule and i asked people you know what is the ideal time for them to watch an episode of quilt nerd uh live and it was you know i would say overwhelmingly mostly overwhelmingly the evening is the best time and indeed you know yeah i mean saturday night is a great night for the show i mean yeah yeah the night shows are good and unfortunately i mean it's gonna, we're gonna work it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll be the one that's to suffer here, <laughs> ultimately. Um, gladly, right? Mostly. When I go back to London after QuiltCon, I mean, could London, could, could the UK just be more inconvenient in terms of the time difference? Because, I mean, it's eight hours difference between uh, or, or London and like Los Angeles, you know? That's a lot, that's hard. Because when it's, and you know, I've talked about this before, but like I've done gigs, plenty of gigs um, uh, in the, you know, over Zoom since I've been over there uh, in the past two years, over the course of the past two years, year and a half. And I mean, I've done a number of gigs at three in the morning because if a guild meeting is at like seven o'clock, standard time, Eastern standard, whatever, uh, maybe central, it's, it's three in the morning and you can, you know, two in the morning is like, wow, I'm really up late. Four in the morning, four, Eric's home, you can tell. Uh, four in the morning, I love getting up at four in the morning. I love it. It's like my favorite hour of the day, actually. But three, three in the morning is the middle of the GD night. 
I mean, it's really, it's nothing. It's not late. It's not early. It's the middle of the night. So I don't think I can do a 3 a.m. show. However, it's just really tough. I mean, maybe I should, I mean, okay. Midnight would be hard. I could do it. I could do it. And if I do a midnight show, then it's what? S 6 p.m. in the, in the Chicago. <sighs> um, but it's four o'clock on the West Coast. I don't know. I'm working. I, I'm thinking it out. I'm thinking it through. And yeah, even a couple hours difference can be a pain. Totally. I can't believe America works at all. I mean, sometimes it doesn't. But you know, New York and LA, that's a, that's a lot of hours in between these, you know, major hubs of like information and things. So I got to figure it out. But I am, I would love to do a show at 4 a.m. I would. I would. And it's, but it's 10 p.m. Here, I guess here's my question. Let me just ask you this question. We can take, we can take, yeah, I know. Um, once you started getting a night show, you felt bad for not hanging with the husband. I know. I mean, it's going to be different for everybody. And I do like having like this daytime show at least once a week, you know. But, uh, but I do want to figure out, and maybe it's a poll, you know, how late is too late for the majority of people? Because the thing is, if we could do a 10 p.m. Eastern, is that right? 9 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. You West Coasters, you'll be like, oh, excellent. Um, but, but 10 p.m., I mean, maybe it's fine. Because a lot of quilt makers, you know, you're, you're quilting all through the night. You're just quilting all night long. And so maybe that's okay. Um, I mean, I don't usually go to bed until like 11 o'clock, sometimes midnight anyway. But it's different when you're winding down to go to bed than when you're getting up to do this. So I'm working it out. I just want to let you know. Like, it's going to have to change a little bit. Because to do a 7 p.m. show, it's, a, it's like, yeah, it's like 3 a.m. in London. I, I don't know. I just don't think it would be as good of a show. Maybe we'll try it though. I mean, we will try it. I will do a show at 3 a.m. I will. I mean, I hereby promise that I will do that because we got to try it. Maybe it'll be amazing. I mean, I'll be punchy. I'll probably be really funny. Mark that. Let's see if it's true. Um, good morning, Robin's Nest and Hex. It's so good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Um, so yeah, so that's the scoop. I think there's, uh, there's two other things. Let's see. Oh yeah. So there's a Valentine's Day special because I'm gonna do an extra stream on Monday the 14th. I've already started amassing the content. It's gonna be great. I don't know if, you know, if it's gonna be like a, like, like Valentine's date night kind of thing. Like, it's up to who your par partner is, you know? They might be like, oh, oh great. A Valentine's Day quilt nerd show. There's nothing I'd rather do more than to show you I love you than sit you down to watch this show. But, uh, but there will be, I mean, obviously, the theme is love. Um, and then, yeah, and then uh, this is really the last thing. I, um, I went to Abe Books and I clicked around and indeed they have an affiliate program. So soon enough, I don't know if it'll be like a button on the website or like even on the screen or something, these things are possible. So when I recommend a book that's out of print, which most of the books are, you know, that are recommended on the show, um, if you wanna buy it, you can click on the affiliate link and I get 5% of the sale. So if you buy a book for a dollar, I'm just saying, if enough of you do it, I can buy a Tootsie Roll. Um, that's great. That's great. It's a Tootsie Roll I didn't have before. I'm serious. Okay. So today, today's show, I didn't mention it at the top of the show. It's amazing. I have two like massively awesome like chapters to the show, massively off, off, uh, awesome halves to the show. I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know if we're going to take a break in between. I don't know. Uh, but okay. New Elizabeth says that she could hang out from nine to 10 30 ish, but would have to drop out eventually. Yeah. That's the thing. You know, attendance could, there could be attrition if it gets too late, which, you know, or maybe, maybe, you know, night owls will be like, Oh, or I finally got off the night shift or the late shift. I could come and, and watch Mary and the cool nerds. So, um, Mary and the Nerds, that's the band, obviously, that we're gonna have when we start our band. Um, so you'd use the affiliate link. I mean, it'd be easy enough, you know, uh, to just click on a link. Um, Pem Burrito, it's true. I start quilting at 8 p.m. Pacific and go until late until I start swearing too much or falling asleep. Exactly, when, you, when you're at your machine and you start just listing to the side, you know, that's when you know it's time. You gotta call it. Uh, so, 
I have, I did something yesterday. Let's talk about the quote behind me and then we'll talk about what's going on. Um, you love Mary, Mary and the Nerds is like, what do we play? It, we play like a tuba, obviously. <laughs> tuba, tambourine, theremin, <laughs> obviously, uh, and uh, cowbell. But then as many people who want to be in the band can be in it. So then we just double up on everything or triple up. So there's like nine cowbells, five theremins, you know, whatever. There's a place for everybody in Mary and the Nerds. Okay, so this show, if you've never seen it before, it's about quilts. But, you know, it's about a lot more because quilts are, um, they're about a lot more than just, you know, being pretty blankets. I got to get small. Help, help, I'm small. Uh, quilts are a lot more than just, you know, things that you put on your bed. They're a lot more than, you know, these like folksy items of, you know, days gone by. Uh, Quilt Con is coming up, this huge, huge show. I mean, I don't know if it's the biggest show of the year, but it's working on it. It's a big show for the Modern Quilt Guild. And um, yeah, I mean, this is a quilt that you're looking at right now. Uh, it was made in 1984 by a woman named Janet Stedman. So quilts have really evolved. And what we know on this show, why we, why we love to be here, is that um, quilts tell us about everything we wanna know. You know, they tell us about history and they tell us a lot about art and they raise a lot of questions too, like um, whether they are art or craft or, or um, whether, they, you know, whether it's a gendered thing. You know, are quilts feminine? I, don't, I mean, let's talk about it, you know. Um, they have, I mean, are they gendered, right? It's, it's, I mean, I don't know. These are the questions I like to ask. I don't like to ask questions that are, you know, easily answerable. Like, what will I have for lunch today? I'll have a burrito. Oh, burrito. <gasps> yeah, yeah. A lot of spooky things take place on this show. You'll see, you'll see. Um, in fact, in fact, this quilt right here has an element of this. Because uh, Janet Stedman, as I learned, as I was printing off this information, uh, is a Nancy Crow acolyte, I believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Taking classes with Nancy Crow uh, uh, so, so many years. And that's, that's who had, Nancy Crow was the quilt maker who had the, um, the quilt on the desktop last time. I'm feeling puffy, I just realized. Because I ate pepperoni pizza last night. Oh, so good. It's the best pepperoni pizza I've ever had. It's from Parlor Pizza here in Chicago. If you're in Chicago, you have to get it. It's called Sergeant Pepper, and they put truffle oil on the top. And I don't even care about truffles. I feel like maybe I've talked about this before. I'm having deja vu, but it's fine. I'll talk about it my whole life. It's the best pizza I've ever had in my life. The crust is perfect. The sauce is tart, and I always get extra sauce on the pie. And the, the, the pepperonis are huge and they're not like gross. You don't see like little flecks of like, you know, the fat in the, you know, I mean, it's very, it's very fattening uh, food, but you know, it's like not like speckled, you know, it's not like that speck. It's like this, I don't know, I don't know, it's magic. And the truffle oil just brings out the flavor. Oh God, there's one piece left, excuse me, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so, so, but I'm real, I'm real puffy. So I gotta drink this water, <clears throat> I'm retaining water, I mean salt. Fascinating. So, so Janet Stedman is an acolyte of, of Nancy Crow, apparently. Um, and we get a pepperoni pizza, a nun maker, get one immediately. It's easy. Just order. Um, yeah, the show's about everything, and, and right now it's about Janet Stedman. So, so here I've got a, an article about her. Some of you may know her name. I feel like I did. I, you know, her name sounds a little familiar, but sometimes, you know, we make it up. Um, Susan was up late. Susan's up late. She's up late. Uh, more cowbell? Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, Molly. Molly's here. Awesome. Awesome. So um, this is from Natalie Olson, an article that Natalie Olson, Olson wrote for, uh, for Whidbey Life magazine. I don't know what that is really, but maybe we'll learn more about it. Um, 2016 is when this article came out about Janet Stedman. So let's see what's uh, what's up. You know, really you could say this this quilt has some pepperoni red. I mean, look at this. Those look like, they look like little pepperonis. Do you see that? Here. 
Humans like to find patterns. It's true. But they're, they're pepperonis, okay? Um, I see them everywhere. <laughs> so here's what, here's what they say about this quilt. And I will zoom in and we'll take a look at at this quilt a little more closely. I mean, I mean, I, I love it visually. Wait, let's, let's back up just a little bit. Okay. I mean, visually, this is pretty cool. I mean, I always love the quilts that I pick to go in the background to start the show. Um, yes, it is. It is. Hey, Marianne, girl, we did have a pizza quilt on the show a while ago. Remember that? Uh, 1984. This quilt is called Firebrand. And you know, medallion quilts are totally a thing. And I think, you know, we, in fact, we're going to see one today. Because if you didn't notice from the title of the show today, some of you know what the Raja quilt is. We're going to talk about the Raja quilt today. And World War II quilts. Oh my god. It's the best show ever. So medallion quilts are a thing, a center point of focus. You know, usually, well, not always with a frame around it, but a border, you know, usually. Um, I suppose you could have a medallion quilt with nothing else but the medallion in the center. Yeah, yeah, actually, mm, I can think of one now. Um, but, but yeah, but, but this is made in 1984, and a medallion quilt is so traditional. So Ms. Stedman, you know, took a very traditional format, very traditional structure for a quilt, and in 1984, you know, she's like, well, let's just mess around with this thing. I'm not going to do like a... A conventional quilt block. I'm not going to do a mariner's compass or a star in the center or a floral wreath or something. Uh, we're going to go like geometric with this thing. So Janet Stedman, Stedman says in 2016, quilting is like eating potato chips. I like her already. <clears throat> Quilting is like eating potato chips. You can't stop at just one. I'm gonna stop at just one, but they're gonna be here. Um, unquote. Stedman's career began in 1983. 1983? So that means this quilt, this is her second year of making quilts because Firebrand was made in 1984. It's, that's crazy. It was crazy time, crazy time. Um, her career began in 1983 because of a new round bed that needed a cover. Groovy, round bed. She loved fabric and sewing, so decided to learn to quilt a cover. That's pretty awesome. I mean, necessity, mother of invention, right? After a few classes, Janet de designed and made spiral progression for that bed in Texas. Oh my God. We gotta look at that. <clears throat> it's amazing. I know where to find it. She definitely didn't stop at making just one. Her quilts have won awards internationally. Remember, this is in 2016, this article was written, uh, and are part of collections throughout the US and Canada, Africa, and Antarctica. <laughs> a few months ago, okay. a few months ago, uh, that one delivered to the Palmer Station in Antarctica marked a great milestone. Her quilts have now been shown on every continent on Earth. Oh my God. You ordered a pizza and a salad for lunch. Excellent, excellent. It's good, it's good. Good job, good job. Um, that's, I mean, we should look at Janet Stedman more, yeah, in the future. I wanna see this quilt in Antarctica. So while Stedman's quilts make their homes in places around the world, she and her husband moved from Texas to settle on Whidbey in 1991. Where is Whidbey? Can someone look it up? Is it in? Whidbey Island outside Seattle. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's Whidbey Island outside Seattle. Eric's from Seattle. It was like returning to the island for her as she had taught at Langley High School right after graduating from the University of Puget Sound. Okay, okay. Um, over the years, her quilting community on Whidbey has developed significantly. Um, okay, they have a little bit more about friends of hers community. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. She and some of these uh, 10 other quilt makers met through classes over the years, mostly with renowned quilter Nancy Crow, and they formed the group Fiber Optics. O-P-T-I-X, optics, which still meets once a month. We gotta look at fiber optics. By the way, you know, I don't like to turn away from the camera and like do this. Dead air, it's bad, but I gotta, I gotta be slower and more precise in my notes. 
because there are some that's like, I have no idea because I'm like, okay, get back to the show, you know, and it's like way too fast. So, um, so I got I to gotta chill. You're just going to have to. It's, it's for us all. It benefits us all if I take my time. Where have I heard that before? Every job I've ever had. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Nancy Crow describes Stedman, Janet Stedman, as, quote, a terrific example of an artist who has stayed focused these past 40 years. Wow. Producing excellent work year after year, well into her 80s. Her machine piece quilts have gotten better and better. Mmm. Little Bird Stitch, by the way, says lots of good quilting teachers go to Whidbey Island. Honey, lots of good teachers go to Whidbey Island to teach. Oh. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, Marsha Durst lives on Whidbey. <laughs> um, interesting, interesting, very interesting. It's very, it's, it's very expensive. Is that right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, honey, Myra says that's why you're so cool, because you're a, a Pacific Northwest Seattle kid. Yeah. He's like, yeah. <laughs> We've been you. Um, okay, she's a first-rate colorist. This is Nancy Crow again, uh, and craftsman. Meticulous uh, in all aspects of creating her very individual quilts. Just a little bit more, a little bit more zeroing in on this. Oh, look at the purple. You know, this is this is interesting. Hang on. Uh, meticulous in all aspects of creating her very individual quilts. She has a distinctive and strong voice that is all her own. So we'll look at fiber optics for sure at some point. Um, and, but I want to know something about this quilt. I think that's what I've got on Janet. Um, I think this is like, a, this is, there are very few fabrics in this quilt because, okay, let's count, really. You've got the black, okay? You've got the purple. You've got a dark purple, okay? Then you've got this sort of salmon color. And then you've got this sort of peachy, sallow, Mary ate too much pepperoni pizza last night. Uh, fabric. And then this pale pink. Is that the same salmon color? No, maybe it's a darker pink. Basically, the reason I wanted to know is because this stripe up here, this middle thing, is the same fabric over here, which is, in my mind, a very challenging fabric to use. Hey, Sonia, you're not late. Um, hey, thank you. Oh, I love Flick. Your name is just charming. I'm so glad you're here. Or should I call you Bean? Or the... Um, thanks for coming to um, the show. So, so yeah, I just wonder because, um, you know, you've got like one print and then these solids, but I'm seeing a lot of them, you know, repeat, right? So I was just wondering, just wondering. Maybe there's, maybe there's 10, 10 or so, maybe 11, I don't know. Okay, so that's it. My mom would call this fabric, probably, this print, which is like a chevron-y sort of thing, very busy. She would probably call it a wonder fabric. And that is a little joke, and it means I wonder why I bought it. <laughs> um, but obviously, Stedman made it work. Okay, 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 enough of that. So, let's talk about, oh wait, no, I said World War II. <laughs> no, 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 World War I, World War I. We're, we're taking it back, the greatest generation. We're gonna take it back to World War I. I need to, um, I need to amend my, uh, hang on, hang on. I need to amend, uh, my, 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 uh, title for this, for this, uh, program. So don't read ahead. Don't read ahead. Don't look away. Look away. Look away. Don't read ahead. Look away. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. All right. So the book, oh yeah. So yesterday or the day before. I went down to the Wonder Fabric, it's pretty good, right? Um, I went down to the storage unit below our, you know, in the basement of our building. Because I may have mentioned that I have boxes. I mean, I guess I know now I have like nine boxes, big ones, like U-Haul medium sized boxes full of quilt books. Um, and in my former apartment, you know, I had 1,500 square feet down in the South Loop. Uh, but here, I have 900 square feet, or ni 963 or something like that. And I have a husband now. I was a single woman, a bachelorette before. Was I ever? And uh, I had lots of rooms, and I mean, just this hallway with books, a bookshelf, a built-in bookshelf. 
it was full of quilt books. Well, I don't have that room here, you know? So, oh, I've got some wonder fabrics too. Oh yeah. So my books have been down, down in storage, you know? But as you know, I've been home, so I've been pulling out quilt books. So the other day I went down to get some of those books and bring them up here. I'll put on Instagram the picture of what's happening over there. I took them all, all of, all, all of the boxes but two. There are still two large boxes of quilt books down in the storage unit. And you know what I did? Because I had to stop the madness. I was like, well, I mean, we're not going to be able to walk around in here if I, if, I, if I don't stop. But I put the Christmas ornaments, you know, the Christmas decorations on top of those boxes so that next year I will have two fresh boxes of books to, to look at and share with you all. Because I have to get the Christmas ornaments, so that will force me to get that. They're way in the back. So, um, so I brought these, you know, lots of boxes up and I pulled these books out and it's like, oh my God, I have like everything. I have so much awesome stuff. And it's partly because my mom, because she was at the AQSG seminar one year and Eleanor, Eleanor, this isn't one of hers. Eleanor Malone, I believe, was a woman who had passed away and all of her huge, her huge quilt library was up for auction, for bidding. And mom was like, would you like me to bid? And I was like, yes. And so, so she did and she won. So I got a lot of quilt books. I mean, my mom's awesome and I really appreciate it. Mom, if you're watching the show, you know that I'm very grateful for these books. And a lot of them have book plates in them. A property of, Ele uh, a property of Eleanor Malone's library. And a lot of them are signed, you know, to Eleanor, a fellow quilt lover, that kind of thing. So, so this one was not one, one from Eleanor's uh, library. It's one that I had before. And this book, this is a great book. World War I Quilts, okay? Sue Reich. And this is what I mean. When you, when you learn about quilts, you learn about everything. Because this book is full of amazing, amazing quilts that tell the story of the Civil, I mean, of, the, uh, of World War I. And, you know, I just wouldn't pick up a book about World War One. I. I just probably wouldn't ever, I don't know. There's a lot to learn about. And World War One is like, you know, it's not high on the list, but this book is high on the list because of the quilts that are in here. And so I look at this and I read these things and then I share it with you. And it's like, we know something more about World War One. So that's why I, we love this. <laughs> it's like, we, we love it because we see beautiful things and, we're like literally enriching ourselves. Um, hey, Taylor fan. I'm so, thanks so much for coming in. I, you know, I love this little heart thing. Why didn't people think of this before? I feel like this is like a thing that the Zoomers have brought into our life. And I appreciate that. So thank you so much for coming in, Taylor fan. And someone else just followed or something. You see, uh, Auburn's Variety Stream is raided. What? We're being raided. This is our second time. Auburn. Thank you. That's so awesome. So if you don't follow Aubryn, and I need to, uh, click, you know, follow her channel. That's so great. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. We, we must know more. It's, you're our second raid ever. It feels pretty good. Thank you for coming in. And everybody who was watching Aubrey, appreciate it. Not Aubrey, Aubryn. Awesome. So cool. I wonder what kind of variety you have. Is it like a variety show? I think we're going to find out. Um, and last time we were going to do a raid, our first raid, like to raid someone else's channel, Myra reminded me after I had signed off that I forgot. So if there's a, a sewing channel out there that's got a live show, you know, poke around once it gets to be toward, you know, like one or so. Hey, Myra. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Myra. Myra's going to remind me. Um, that, uh, oh, for gaming. Okay, right on, right on. I'm a Beat Saber fan. Okay. Uh, remind me toward one o'clock that we need to find a channel to go raid, you know, and we all, we all go in there and if you like it, you know, you stick around and check it out and yeah. So what I did is I, I went through this book and I was at the scanner for a very long time today, uh, because I wanted to do like a best of kind of thing from this book because the quilts in here, let me show you the quilt that, that, I mean, I was looking at a lot of books yesterday, as you can imagine, and I stopped with this one with this quilt. I mean, I was like, oh my God. Now that's, that's oriented correctly. I, I, I turned it around a few times because I thought maybe, maybe the horse was like, no, but that's, that's correct. The shield, the Captain America shield, not quite, but you know, um, is, uh, is, you know, right side up there. Hey, Kitty Hannah, 
driving to a quilt shop to do some fabric shopping. Pink, trying not to be part of the chat because it's unsafe while driving. It's true, but you can listen. It's like a podcast, and we will we'll chat for you. Um, Myra's ready to raid something, 1,000%, so am I. <laughs> Um, so this, I saw this quilt and I just thought, God, it's so cool. So let's talk about World War One. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I've got the book here, obviously, and I'm going to do my best to turn to the, to the page <clears throat> where I have the things. But it was very, I, I, because I started at the back as I was flipping through these things, um, ordering everything was a little bit weird. But don't worry, I have, I have a plan. Yes, right there. Look at that. Um, 121. Okay, yes, here it is. Ta -da. So, World War One. I, I mean, let's, let's just read the jacket of this book, okay, to set us up here. <clears throat> this is by Sue Reich, and we're going to learn more about Sue Reich a little bit later, okay? She's delightful. We featured her in the Connecticut issue of Quilt Folk, and I got to, I got to speak with her for a long time. Quilt making in the 1910s can be best described as the convergence of the quilt styles of the late 19th century with the innovations of the early 20th century. Oh, so cool. Um, and what are those innovations? I mean, sewing machines, more advanced, textiles, you know, more cheaply made, you know, flooding fabric, okay, flooding the country with fabric. One phenomenon of the era was the emergence of major entrepreneurial quilt designers. We've been knowing that. And the exciting fresh look in the quilts they contributed to the quilt world. Two catastrophic events in 1917 and 1918. Who knows? 1918. Yeah, just, I mean, prepare. Prepare, prepare. <clears throat> Two catastrophic events in 1917 and 1918 interrupted the emergence of these new trends in quilt making. World War I, also referred to as the Great War, and the 1918 pan pandemic, uh, also known as the Spanish flu, brought hardship and death to America and the entire world. Much quilt making from April 17 to March 1919, sorry, April 1917 to March 1919 was focused solely on providing for our soldiers and the Red Cross. I mean, much quilt making for two years was like all about that, raising money and everything. Amazing. With their quilt making skills, women contributed thousands of quilts for one of the greatest benevolent efforts of the 20, 20th century. Yeah, <clears throat> so let's take a look at some highlights from from this from this amazing book. And you know, Sue Wright, um, we do appreciate y'all. Oh my god. Um, wait, Auburn said it won't let her chat. You know what, Auburn? I set up the two-factor authentication thing on this chat, which is a little annoying. But before we have more mods. Um, then just Estelle Witherspoon, she does her best, but um, it kind of keeps some you know, keeps the riffraff out. And since we're like girls and we're talking about quilts and stuff, like I, I worry a little bit with the, with the trollage. So you might have to do that two-factor authentication thing, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. We, we see you and we appreciate you. So cool that you came here. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so this quilt, this quilt, it's called the Patriot Shield Quilt. And it was made in 1917. It's 14 inches by 14 inches. So, I mean, that's tiny. I didn't know that. This small quilt honors the service and role of the horse on the battlefield, sorry, battlefront in World War I. Let's just, let's just pause. Somebody made a mini quilt, which is interesting because I didn't think there were many mini quilts, mini minis, before like, you know, 2010 or something. Well, it's honoring horses in the war. Hashtag keep quilts weird. And by weird, I mean amazing. Can we get, I mean, that's, that's this. Has there ever been a church, quilt church moment? Until this moment, that is so amazing. I just, I, it's so cool. 
I mean, can, can we get, you know, some more, like, thank you horses quilts in the world? I think we should. And it looks a little bit like a cow. And I say that with, you know, I say, you know, I say that with, like, deep, like, joy and gratitude. Because she wasn't like, you know, my horse doesn't really look like a horse. I better just bag this thing. No, no. She was like, oh, there's good. It's going to be in a book one day. And on the internet, which doesn't exist, people are going to love it and celebrate it. And it'll be on the internet forever. You know? She didn't stop because she didn't make a perfect horse. She made it way better than I could. I mean, come on. Um, Scaredy Turtle, thanks so much for following. That's awesome. It's awesome. Like in the movie War Horse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, just think about how different the battlefield was at that time. So across from this, this quilt uh, in the book was this one. And I just, I mean, it was just too, too cool to not, to not include as well. I mean, the shield thing, and that was my other thought about it was, you know, this the shield motif is really great. I mean, we see a lot of flags, you know, on quilts and, um, yeah, Karen, right? Do the do the best you can. Um, flags, of course, on quilts and stuff. But like, I don't know. Like the Quilts of Valor program, which is so extraordinary. I think they're probably close to 400,000 quilts have been given to Americans that have been <clears throat> touched by war, veterans and uh, service men and women and, and family members too, I think. Um, you know, I don't know. Are there, do people work with the shield motif? as much as they should, I don't know. I think if I make another Quilt of Valor, the shield. I mean, what's more American than that, you know? Captain America, they gave him a shield, that's his thing. It's looked, it looks a little different. Um, a Discord message earlier about a little, oh, okay, the twilight sound. Whoa, sorry, hang on, hang on. Little Bird Stitch says, my gosh. Ring the Twilight Sound, I sent you earlier a Discord message about a little-known Canadian quilt effort during World War II featured in the Haptic and Hugh podcast. Really? I, I mean, I'll check. I gotta, I gotta face my Discord fears, because I'm so behind. Um, embrace the imperfections. Robin's Nest Quilt, Quilt Creation, or Robin, Robin's Nest Creation says, embrace the imperfections. That's your quilting motto this year. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. Um... Kitty Hannah, can we take a moment to appreciate the fact that my local shop is actually in, in an old church and it's called Heavenly Stitches. Is it in Michigan? Are you in Michigan? I went to a, a, a shop in Michigan that was in a, in a church. That'd be, that'd be spooky too. Faith Quilts just finished her second uh, Quilts of Valor. That's so great. That's so great. Heck yeah. I need to, no, Ohio. Okay, I need to do, it's been a while since I did a quilt of By the way, this one um, was made in 1917, 62 by 80. Oh wow, that's like every throw quilt I've ever made is 60, 60 by 80. This quilt was made by the mother of a World War I soldier while he was serving on the battlefront. Pretty cool. Okay, what do we have next? Oh, the one I started with, the one I had up here first, is a Red Cross quilt. I mean, there are so many of course, many of them have, you know, the Red Cross symbol, you know, obviously. But I liked this one. I loved the stars in between the crosses. I don't know. I just thought that was really, it stood out to me um, as being really, really cool. It's um, 72 by 81, and it's hand applique with hand embroidered, uh, hand, and it's hand embroidered, and it's cotton. So these are the names around the stars people who, you know, gave money to, these were all charity quilts, right? Raising money. And so you could get your name on the quilt if you donated. Um, and of course, I mean, this book is full of information about such things. Let's just, let's read a little bit, shall we? I mean, that's what we're here for. After the, so this is under the Red Cross flag, okay? After the United States officially entered World War I on April 6, 1917, hang on. Nearly 2.8 million Americans were drafted, American men were drafted into the service. Wow. Throughout the next few months, President Wilson appealed to the American home front. Prairie Susie, hi, and you're a World War I historian? Shields were not used in trench warfare. They were a common symbol of protection. I love that, I love it. 
It's such a great symbol. Um, yeah, it's not fraying. It's signatures. Marianne, I thought the same thing when I saw it. Um, throughout the next few months, President Wilson appealed to the American home front to support and raise monies for the war fund and the roll call campaigns th through organizations uh, like the Red Cross. These two national movements provided major funding for the Red Cross. Uh, one of their most popular slogans, Susie, you're probably just like, yep, 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 um, was, we cannot serve in the trenches, but we can all serve at home. Americans enthusiastically responded by joining the ranks of supporters with a $1 membership. During the course of the war, over $250 million in 1917 was raised for the relief effort abroad. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, so she's got uh, newspaper articles in here. It's a, it's a really, really good book. Um, uh, look, in Portland, Oregon, more northwest, uh, on October 13th, 1917, um, welcome to, okay, good. There's an article in the Oregonian, you know, What You Can Make at Home by Mrs. Portland. Blocks for a Red Cross pattern quilt are very easy, easily made from any kind of red goods, silk, cotton, or woolen. Um, cut an oblong piece of cloth six inches long and two inches wide. Also from the same red goods, cut two squares, two by two inches. I mean, we could all, it's like, yeah, it's really easy. It's like easy, easy piecing, you know? It's like maybe the easiest. It's not even a, it's not even a four patch. Well, depends on how you make it, but anyway. Um, from similar white, well, yeah, okay, it is. <laughs> from similar white or light colored goods, cut four squares, two by two inches. So each of the two red squares to the two light colored squares. Placing the red square, but wait, she goes on. Um, and I mean, it's just, there's no diagrams. She's just like, do this, you know, do that. And there you go. Here's a, a cool label. Look at this. So this is a close up of the center bottom square. Um, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wait, what's going on here? What's going on? Let's see. Molly says, how scary and stressful sending hugs and a quick recovery for you, MIL. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what's going on? MIL. Wait a second, what is, what's going on? What's, hugs and hugs are healing. Okay, hold on now. I missed something. Oh, okay, I missed something big here. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, mother in law. Okay, word and bird nerd. She had a fall. Yeah. Yeah. Good, um, good thoughts to you. Hmm. Yeah, that's scary. It's really scary. Molly, your dad passed away four years ago today. He was the OG nerd in your family. Probably taught you everything you know, right? About being a nerd. I'm glad you're all here today. It's good. It's good to be here. Um, yeah, scary and stressful indeed. Um, yeah, okay, okay. She's 101. Fractured her hip, but no surgery. Okay, rehab and then home. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, I forget where you are, but I mean, here in Chicago, it's so cold. It's like going home, soup, you know resting and stuff that sounds it's it's a good good day to do something like that you know no matter what your circumstance right just be home a little rest um okay all right so this i'll read this to you in case you can't see it uh this liberty quilt uh, sorry so this is a close-up of the center bottom square of a quilt made in connecticut a red cross quilt that explains the making of the quilt and the amount of monies raised for the red cross the label identifies it as Liberty Quilt. This Liberty Quilt was started by Mrs. Martha J. Brumer, Brunner of Hartford, born in 1918. Wow. To raise, no, 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 no. Oh, Hartford, Connecticut in 1918. I was like, okay, this is strange. To raise money for the Red Cross as a patriotic service in honor of our brave men and women in our country's service. It was uh, planned and made by Mrs. Alice M. Jones and Mrs. M. G. Brott of the Ladies' Aid Society of the Windsor Avenue Con Congregational Church of Hartford, Connecticut. The names were inscribed by Mrs. Waters, Miss Waters, and the amount raised for the Red Cross by means of this quilt was $1,150. One quilt raised that much money in 1918. 
That's awesome. It's so great. I know. Marian says I'd be pleased to raise 100 and uh, pleased to raise $1,150 now. How impressive. And perhaps appreciation of the art of quilting. 1000%. 1000%. <laughs> yeah, cold in Florida is not the same, but um, yeah, indeed, indeed. So Red Cross, you know, all of these, all of these quilts. Not every quilt that we see, we'll see in this, um, was a charity quilt, but many of them are. And this one, are you ready for this? You're not. Yeah, you're not ready. You're not ready. You're not ready. But you better get ready. <clears throat> this quilt. This is Miss. Hmm. J-A-N-V-I-E-R. Yanniver? I'm not sure. Ms. Yanniver's quilt. Um, this is from the Times Picoon. Picoon? I God, of course I would have to come across that word. I've never known how to say it. Picain? How do you say that? The, the famous paper from New Orleans. How do you say it? Can someone phonetically put it in there? Okay, wow. Word and Bird Nerd says 11... Uh, $150 is like 21k today. 21k? They raised with one quilt. That's insane. Okay, um, and Just So Viv is in the chat. Just So Viv, I'm so glad you're here. And she sees we're looking at the Raja quilt today. And you're currently reading Dangerous Women, which is a fictionalized account of its making. Are you serious? That is really, that's really spooky. That is spooky. Because you know what? The Raja quilt, which is the next quilt we'll look at, is it's been on the list forever. I mean, it's been bouncing around my external hard drive for a while. So it's that's crazy. So okay, Picayune. I've got Picky Picayune, Picayune, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Okay. So this is from the Times Picayune. Okay. From nineteen nineteen. Miss Yanavera's quilt is AEF history. Patchwork comprises insignia of many divisions of overseas fighters. Army blankets are a familiar sight, but army quilts are rare. So rare that New Orleans is said to boast the only one of its kind in existence. Army blanket quilts, people. It is of the good old fashioned patchwork variety and was quilted, padded, and pieced by Miss, Miss Lois Jeanvier. Yeah, Jeanvier. From 120 patches collected during her work abroad, representing almost every insignia of military life used in the AEF. 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 We'll find out. Unless, well, hey, Susie might know. I don't know. I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> you probably like... The one thing I don't know about World War One, and you asked me, but um, yeah, when our grandmothers did patchwork, every fragment of sprigged dimity or cashmere in quaint design had a history of the garment it fashioned and the occasions on which it was worn. Stories that are woven in the world's history hang about the patchwork quilt that will hold a place of honor among the household goods of Miss Janvier. Janvier when she marries Captain Jack Lester of Ohio in February. Um, got a detail shot here. Look at that, December 1917, she stitched the date into it. That's so good. Yeah, uh, World War I does seem particularly brutal. AEF, here's Prairie, uh, Prairie Susie coming in. AEF means American Expedition Force, she says. That identifies the American soldiers that went overseas during World War I. Oh, no, no. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Susie. Thank you. Seriously, that's awesome. Of course we have a World War I historian in this, in this, uh, I almost said school. Interesting. Um, and then this last bit about this um, army blanket quilt. It's crazy. Most of the patches were collected by soldiers who frequented, frequented her YMCA hut in Germany and had learned of their colonel's fad. One square containing the insignia of the railroad artillery represents the success of a search in which virtually the whole division joined. Oh wait, there's a little bit more. Few members of the RAR, whoops, few members of the RAR had gone into Germany, but their insignia is one of the most fascinating.
Interesting. I think I'm missing a picture. I'm confused. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Well, it's great. <laughs> I think I may have gotten into <clears throat> the description of another quilt, but you know what? I like this boat. Let's focus on that. It's got a little flag and it says USA. I think there's another quilt that has insignias on it that I started reading about. Anyway, I know you're all going to go and get this book. So whatever I aired on, you'll know. You can tell me. <sighs> okay. How embarrassing. Um, micro scraps. You know what? Yeah, let's focus on that. There's these little micro scraps. Look at this. It's really true. It's really true. These tiny, tiny things. Yeah, I don't know that this is all of that. But anyway, anyway. You know that Texas Lone Star book, by the way, <clears throat> that we looked at, those amazing Texas quilts some weeks ago? Um, it was so weird. They printed the information about the quilt. Like, you'd look at a quilt, and the information about it had been printed on the previous page. So, like, the, 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 spread, the, the spread you were looking at, the text on the right-hand side did not go with the quilt on the left. It was very weird. I feel like I just had that moment. Okay. Um, okay, let's look at this one. Okay, I love this. They, there's all sorts of really wonderful, um, you know, newspaper clippings and all this stuff. And I loved this because look what, they, look what they say. Quilt for Red Cross knitted by 18 boys and 12 girls. So this isn't a new thing. To say, I mean, people say, sometimes I'll tell them, yeah, I, you know, make quilts or I'm into quilts and, and they'll say, oh, my grandmother used to knit. And I'll be like, that's good. <laughs> that's not what I do. <laughs> but you know, it, we hear it. I think we hear it. And, um, and, but it's not new. It's not because people don't know the difference or, or they, they don't know the difference, but they, they often have not known the difference. Quilt for Red Cross knitted by 18 boys and 12 girls, unless, unless knitting was a name, was another word for quilting a hundred and some years ago. But I don't know, I don't think so. This, this picture is really cute. And wasn't it, isn't it true that the World War I is, yeah, it is a blanket. Yeah, it's, a, it's yarn, it's knitted, it's not a quilt, right? I mean, okay, so I guess that's the question. Can you call that, do we call that a quilt? It's a blanket, thank you, it's a blanket. So, Yeah, um, but isn't World War One? I, I mean, it's the first war that was photographed, right? Like that's one of the, the big things about it that that made it so. I mean, one of one of the things that made it such a big deal. It's a pretty big deal without that. But yeah, the patches are knitted together, right? I mean, it's got squares. They're calling it a quilt, exactly. Oh, please, please, don't give us that. Um, by the way, you know, I really take care to make my scans look good. I think there's something wrong with the scanner because it kind of gets a little woogy in the middle. We went through those, um, and it's I, I try my best, but I think I think I need to have need to have the scanner looked at. I mean, do you get a, a, a printer and scanner fixed? Where do you take it? I would much rather get it fixed than buy a new scanner. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so this one. I loved. I mean, there's so many great quilts in here, but look how worn this one is. This one is really, really warm. Non-quilt nerds can call it a quilt, but we know better. Thank you. Knitting squares are knitted squares. Thank you. Thank you. Sarcastic face. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let me make sure that I have, so, th so the caption here says, although this 1918 Blue Star honor roll quilt is worn and torn, it features the names of men who served in World War I from Harveyville, Kansas. And this is kept at the National World War I Museum. Um, yeah, and Susie's like, where does World War I and, and quilt making intersect? On Quilt Nerd, exactly. Um, yeah, remember to put acid-free paper in the folds of your quilts. That is very important. You've been to Harveyville, Molly? You've been, you've been everywhere. Molly's been everywhere. You, you had seen, well, I don't know if you saw the what was her name? What was her name? The, the, the subway tunnel in Toronto or in Canada. Remember that woman? Oh, of course, I can't remember her name, but, but we, we will. Um, so, so let's see. 
Yeah, this one doesn't have specific, I think specifics, but there's there's a picture on the facing page. There's a detail of this too that's really cool that I did. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird. Close up of Blue Star on a roll quilt. I mean, it's really, really worn. But I love that, let me go over here. I love that star in the circle. I don't know, it's just really good graphic design, you know? A blue star in a white circle. And, and sometimes the red, white, and blue quilts, I don't know, like they can seem, well, they're just so red, white, and blue, you know? But this one, and I know it's very faded, but just like, I don't know, it really works for me, design-wise. It feels all American, but maybe, maybe it's because there's a lot of red. Like red is sort of the biggest part of this, and a flag is, you know, the blue is kind of more predominant just because there's this big square of blue with the little white stars, you know, but red plays the, the major role here. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yes, you should have done errands, always put them off. Always put your errands off so you can be here. Um, okay, yeah, and the blue star, the blue stars were for those that served. They were, were replaced with gold stars if they died in service. Didn't know that. I believe, yeah, Sue Reich is a gold star mom. I think that's one of her, I, I, I know that to, enough to say. So, so this, this is cool. Leslie's Illustrated Weekly Newspaper. You know, I've been looking, I've been looking at magazines with a fresh eye. Because if, the, if there were ever a quilt nerd magazine, I'm just saying, it would be the best. I mean, it really would. There's so much content, obviously. And it would be, you know, a, it would be the quilt nerd magazine. So we would, it would be content of this, of this kind. You know, anything we do on the show, it would be, you know, in the magazine. Historical things, you know, archive photos, all that stuff. And so I've been looking at magazines covers of magazines and thinking about what would it look like, you know? Just fantasizing, I'm just fantasizing. And uh, and this is a good one. I really like this, I like this. I like the old old school thing. Oh, those are missiles up there or bullets or something. <laughs> those will probably not, would not appear. But um, Harveyville would be a good place for a quilt nerd retreat, really. Noted carefully. Harveyville, Kansas, right? Harveyville, Kansas equals good place. I'm, not, I'm writing place, not the good place for number four retreat. There, that wasn't so bad. Um, it's an old school, interesting. Bullets or artillery shells, exactly. <laughs> I see you, Warden Bird Nerd. Okay, so um, that's 1918. I just, I don't know, I really, really like that. Be a star, it says down here. Be a star. Okay. Mm, this one, okay. I mean, the, there's so many good ones, but I really kind of picked, I picked, well, I did an edit is what I did. It's my favorite thing to do. Okay. Um, this one is called, hang on. it's called scan number 45. Hang on. Okay. Um, the Maltese Cross, and it's signed Christmas 1918. Look down here. Look down in the left hand corner, right above the quilt nerd <laughs> sign. Xmas. It's a little bit funky, but it says Xmas 1918. Um, this mul multitudinous piece quilt was constructed with 1,125 pieces. I mean, so let's take a look at construction, because I'm not totally. I'm not, how, how did this happen? What's going on here? Homes place service flags in their windows to represent a family member who was in the service. They were right, rectangles with blue stars within a red border. Wow. You have some of them, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm wow. I, I mean, World War I, did you see Peter Jackson's movie? where he took the archival footage. What was it called? They, their names, something about their names. He took archival footage from World War I and like recolored it. And I mean, it, it was 
it was unbelievable. I mean, I you should watch it if you haven't seen it. Peter Jackson's what was it called? What was it? What was the name of that? Something about their name, right? It was incredible. We saw it in the theater. We saw it in the theater, and oh, God, it makes me want to watch it again. Um, so, so what about construction on this? I mean, the little four patch, the little wedges, the little pie wedges. I mean, those are are those pieced? And then, oh no, maybe the maybe the block is the like the white, and then it's they shall not grow old. That's what Peter Jackson's movie was called. They shall not grow old. Um, a cathedral window. Yeah, I think you're right. Actually, I think you're right. When I first looked at it, I thought the the little pie wedges, the four pie wedges that came together, would be the um, the block. But no way, because they would have to be like applique onto a black ground, and that didn't happen. So, Drunkard's Path. <laughs> yes, but I don't see a seam in the black, Susan. Are you the one that said that? Did you say that? Who said that? Who said that? Drunkard's Path. Drunkard's Path. Dee Marie said that. Yeah, I mean, hey. Oh, it's, it's, it's J.H. from Casanova. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to see you. Um, you can lurk. You can lurk anytime. Please lurk. So, um... I don't see a seam in the black. So I think that it is a cathedral window thing, right? It's wonderful, isn't it? God, it's fabulous. I love it so much. And Christmas 1918. Okay, so I gotta keep going because, because I mean, there's so much more to say. <clears throat> this one, this one is crazy. So I thought this was a close up of, of a block or something. No, 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 this is the whole thing. This is the quilt. It's 90 by 90 by 71. 90 by 71 with the house and the gravestone. I mean, come on. And look, it says glory, glory to God, glory be to God. Yeah, glory be to God. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say. The color in this is a little bit bad. I'm sorry, that weird scan. Um, <coughs> let me see. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, if there's, I don't think there's anything more about this particular one. Mm -mm. It's called the churchyard quilt. It's just incredible, incredible. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the embroidery on that last quilt probably served a purpose. It would lend itself to cathedral window. I think, I think that's probably true. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a crazy quilt, but I've never seen one like this because of this pictorial, you know, just this, I mean, it's basically like a, I mean, it is like an artwork, right? <clears throat> a painting or, or so, because it's just this one piece. Anyway, I think it's amazing. Okay, um, let's see here. Oh, okay, this one, this one, wait a minute. Now, this is interesting too. I mean, it's a little bit like, the last one. So somebody mentioned the embroidery on the last one, you know, and we have that same kind of deal as we had on, on the Maltese, the Maltese quilt. So these are just hexagons, right, pieced together, but the decorative stitching is similar to the other one. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Drunkard's path in each. I, maybe I moved on from that other quilt too quickly, but we have we have so much to do. We got to look at the Raja quilt. I mean, I you know it's like it's twelve twenty. <clears throat> we gotta get we gotta get rolling. So across from this one, so this is the star thirteen star hexagon quilt, um, seventy two by seventy two. It was made in nineteen fifteen. This hexagon quilt contains an interesting collection of fabrics with all the seams embellished. Here we go in a feather embroidery stitch. Mm. There are 13 stars appliqued to the top of the quilt. And if Prairie Susie's still here, she may have had to go, but someone else might know, like 13, is there is there a specific, you know, like a, some sort of, you know, specific symbolism in 13, or, or perhaps it was 13 people she was honoring, something like that. Original colonies, okay. You're kind of, I mean, you're getting the Quilt Nerd Award today. 
I mean, you're a cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And you're not, you know what? It's, you're not here every show. You know, I'm not saying like I've been taking attendance. Um, but you know, like you're here today, you know, and that's kind of because we're talking about World War One quilts and here you happen to be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this one is really modern, Marianne. I mean, the, the, it's just this placement of the bright, the bright ones. It's just so abstract and fabulous. And you know, of course there's maybe fading going on, maybe not, but this pale pink down here, like what is even happening? It's so brilliant. And let me tell you, as a person who has tried to do needle turned applique stars, I don't know what is going on. Now I'm not being flippant about dyslexia at all, but it's like I have something in that's flipping around in my, you know, my cognition is sort of doing something like maybe un unusual or, you know, there's something going on with how I'm seeing stars and how I'm like, <laughs> I'm seeing stars and I'm cutting them out and then they just never, I don't know what to do. So you know what, maybe I will like photocopy the, this and or like use my laptop as a light board, which I have done before, or my iPad, and just copy this star motif, you know, and add a quarter inch anyway. Um, because it's really, really good. Yeah, deliberate indeed. It, it does look like wool. It does look like wool, I think it must be. I don't know. Well, yeah, I can see pinstripe here. I can see pinstripe. Okay, yeah, it's wonderful. So, so across from this on, I mean, this is just gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's hard. It's hard across from this quilt in Sue Reich's book is this picture, okay? And the caption reads, this is a postcard, Camp Funston. That was Eric blowing his nose, just in case you heard it. Fort Riley, Kansas. This military base was reported to be one of the hardest hit by the Spanish flu. Postmarked April 5th, 1918. And check this out, look. I'm gonna read this to you. It says, beware the flu. Beware the flu. So this is some about the Spanish flu, which of course I have to read. Oh, and look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Fort Wayne News um, and Sentinel, Fort Wayne, October 19th, 1918. And the, the um, look, she says, flu masks ready to check epidemic. That's this ad, and let me, let me read to you if I can see it in this. Well, I don't know, I'll, I'll try to read what it says. It's very small and old. Red Cross nurse wearing flu mask, okay? A gauze mask is one of the things designed to help fight the wave of Spanish influenza that is causing hundreds of deaths all over the country. These masks made out of gauze are for the victims of the flu to wear. The mask is placed over the nose and mouth to prevent, and that's all they have. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I mean, we've been here before, you know? It's so new to everybody and it's so scary and terrible and it just won't stop and I hate it so much. But it's, we've gotten through it before. We can do it, we can do it. God, it's just worse. Okay, listen to this. Oh, this is gonna blow you away. Hang on, let me go back to this, okay. <clears throat> From Pearson's Weekly. Okay, this is now back to Sue's book. It's a poem, okay? And the poem is called The Latest Victim Size. The latest, there's no author. From Pearson's Weekly. A splitting, oh God, a splitting head and limbs of lead a burning throat and dry. Add to these woes a snuffling nose, a red and streamy eye. Thermometer beneath my tongue reads 104.2. Instead of normal 98, I've got the Spanish flu. Both life and quilt making were interrupted in 1918 and 19, and World War I was only partly to blame. A pandemic influenza virus now known as H1N1 swept the world, killing 50 to 100 million, <sighs> killing 15 to 100 million. I'm gonna get a quilt on the screen for this just because, and this is amazing, this quilt is amazing. <sighs> Pandemic influenza <clears throat> virus, no, okay, killed H1N1, killed 50 to 100 million or three to 5% of the world's population. The virulent illness was selective, striking disproportionately at young adults aged 20 to 40 years, usually the healthiest members of society. 
World War I, with its massive troop concentrations, contributed rapidly to transmission of the flu, sometimes referred to as the Spanish flu. Uh, oh, sorry, massive troops contribute, yeah, rap to the rapidity of transmission. Um, the flu did not discriminate for nationality. From the frozen tundra of Alaska to the tropical paradise islands of the South Pacific, the flu ravaged entire villages until its end in 1919. Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. were the hardest hit cities in the United States. Oh yeah, wasn't, didn't Philly do that parade? Wasn't there like a big parade that like led to a huge surge? I think so. You, you all are probably like going crazy in the chat with like all this information and cool stuff. Molly, is not H1N1 the swine flu? I think so. I think it is. Prairie Susie, that was, the only, that was only the first wave of flu in 1917. The U.S. Army was not fully staffed yet. The big wave was in the fall of 1917 when all the draftees were entering camp and in crowded conditions. You know, Prairie Susie, just, I mean, you're a quilter and a World War I historian. Obviously, Sue Reich, you know, is, is someone that, <laughs> that is, is like you, right? Your sister and this, these interests. But I mean, if you ever should come across a quilt, World War I or two, because Sue did a follow-up book that's World War II, and it's, I mean, every bit as amazing as this one. But, um, you know, if you ever come across some something fabulous, just let me know. I mean, I'll give you her email. You could probably find her online anyway, but, like, you two are birds of a feather. Oh! I hit that by mistake. I hit it by mistake. Um, M. Sujan, my grandfather died from the Spanish flu, a father of three young children, one of which was my mother. That is really, you know what, I've never, I've never, you know, met, as it were, someone who, who told me something like that, you know? That's really interesting. Your grandfather died of Spanish flu. I mean, many people, you know, can, can tell that story just because so many people died, but I, I've never, okay, Proud says my great grandma died in the Baltimore, in Baltimore of Spanish flu. Myra, I wonder if anyone's going to be making a quilt on Station Eleven on, on episode two. Eric, Myra's watching Station Eleven. You need to prepare yourself. It's a very intense show. Um, Molly, your husband got H1N1. See, the thing is with this show is you all are so interesting and you have such interesting things to say that, you know, I, I, you know, I have to stop what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Susan mentions this quilt on, on the screen. And let me just say, as you're looking at it, you know, I, I, I don't want to have this on, oops, sorry. I don't want to have this on the screen. Oh, oh God, don't read ahead, no. I don't want this on the screen. I mean, you know, it's good, but we're, let's look at something, you know, pretty. <laughs> so where is that quilt? Because it's just really, really amazing. Okay. Um, where did it go? What in the world? Well, that's spooky. That's really spooky. It just disappeared. Well, lucky for everybody, I've got lots of things. Oh no, there it is. Okay. Yeah, this one is all, I've made blocks like this, like bow tie sort of variation blocks, but I've never made this many of them. Look how I think this quilt looks like a transparency like it looks like it's made of vellum or something you know because the reds the way the reds play on it and and some of the white it's either she had she had run out of this lighter white and used muslin or something or it faded but it's faded in such it would be faded in such strange places you see what i'm saying this is this like darker sort of off-white you know that's a different fabric no that's a different fabric and it just, it creates this <laughs> extraordinary, extraordinary thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Raffle waffle, between the flu and the war, it must have been devastating to a whole generation. Ken Burns, I think, you know, talks more about the flu. I mean, he, you know, he's a pretty good, pretty good person to go to. But I mean, I, when I just, I just feel like I never heard about the Spanish flu at all until we had a pandemic and then we started talking about it. <laughs> but I, you know, I knew about World War One, but I don't ever, I, I would never until reading about it as an adult, you know, connect these two events. I mean, you, in school I learned about World War One, I, I learned about World War Two, but it's like, hello, 
the the pandemic was such a huge part of that time. Reading ahead looks exciting. Yeah, I gotta get going. Stokey Ware is reading Station Eleven, not. Uh, you're you're not okay. So we won't we don't do we won't do any spoilers. Okay, okay. Let me let me let me just let me just read a little bit more about the flu. Okay, gathering in public places was banned. This is back to Sue Reich. As were public funerals, Molly. Even in the outdoors on church lawns. Quote, masks provided by the Red Cross were encouraged for use in congested gatherings. A half teaspoon of salt in a glass of water may be used as a spray for the nose and throat and was suggested as a preventative. That was from, okay, there's a footnote, <clears throat> but it's, it's far away. In a few short months, the influenza death toll claimed a much heavier toll of American life than that of the Great War. You see what I'm saying? They killed so many more people than, the, than died in the war, which, you know, it's all just so awful. The following letter from a healthcare worker. We know there are some of you out there right now watching who are that sort of person. The following letter from a healthcare worker underscores this deadly epidemic. I gotta read this stuff, y'all. I mean, I just, that's just the way it is. Hang on, let me get you another quilt. This one was made I think just after, I think this is like 1920 or something. Amazing. I think it's just a top, yeah. <sighs> Tales of Fighting Flu, October 24th, 1918. This is from Herman A. Lindenberg, Medical Detachment Base Hospital, Camp Zachary Taylor, Kentucky. Dear friend Herb, I just received your letter today and was mighty glad to hear from you. I didn't know what could be the trouble that you hadn't answered my letter. I am, however, glad to hear that you are getting along as good as you are following your operation. I have been in good health ever since I left home. But say, Herb, I certainly had quite a job to take care of here for about three weeks. When the Spanish influenza became so bad, they opened a number of emergency hospitals here and appointed me as ward master. I get along just fine, but it certainly does keep me busy all of the time. At present, the epidemic situation is much better here. We lost about 732 men in the three weeks. But I was lucky. I didn't have one pass away in the ward which I had charge of. They took in 1,100 patients a day. This sounds like a large number, but it is just the way they were sending them to the hospital. They would admit the patients in the emergency hospitals, and if the officers would find that they were in a serious condition, they would at once transfer them to the main hospital. I had the 219 patients and about 20 men doing the work, as you can imagine how busy I was. It would be hard to explain everything in a letter because it would take quite a long time. Maybe I will get a chance to tell you someday. They have closed all the emergency hospitals now, and I am in the major's office. His name is Alexander. Oh, yeah, Molly. Maybe if we were taught more about it, we wouldn't be in the same situation. Well, we certainly would know that they were wearing masks and social distancing. It wouldn't be so crazy, you know, to have to do this. We'd be like, oh, yeah, they did it before. We can do it again. Um, okay, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll just... Okay, in order to... Sorry, this just, I mean... It fits with what we're talking about. In order to stem the tide of contagion, the United States government took Herculean steps to inform the public about the flu, its symptoms, and preventative measures. It urged, it is a patriotic duty to, to keep well. I can't. I'm going to cry. All sick persons add to the country's burdens. Everybody should be on guard against the flu and become thoroughly familiar with symptoms and precautionary measures. You know? Do your duty to America, to your country, by doing these things, you know? I mean, it really is like a patriotic duty. <sighs> yeah, times have changed all through this book. I mean, it was hard. It was like, stand behind the flag, you know? We've got this, you know, together and just this keep calm and carry on kind of mentality. You know, we had it. I don't think we have it anymore. So the last things here and, and, you know, I think I've got, oh yeah, yeah, okay, just a couple of small things. Um, I thought this was wonderful. This is a 1914 box of Cheney silk squares. So this is how people were buying fabric, you know? It's a charm pack, basically. Charm pack, you know? Hey, Pem Burrito, it's my pleasure to share this history. I mean, this is, this is fabulous.
fascinating stuff. And a quilt is the reason we're here. You know, quilts are the reason that we're learning about it. And I just love that. That's why I love quilts. That's why I love them. They're just this magic carpet, you know. Yeah, mood change. I mean, look, how do you transition out of stuff, you know? Uh, so charm packs. <laughs> Let's talk about buying fabric. I mean, <laughs> um, Molly says there's a great podcast called This Podcast Will Kill You about pandemics and various diseases. That's awesome. Uh-oh, frozen video, perhaps? No? I think maybe maybe refresh your Twitch sometimes. Sometimes that will, that will help. Um, germs are just a theory. It's great. Mm. Myra, ugh, I worry about, worry about you. So, uh, and then there's this too. I took a few scans of what was there. Look, I mean, they're like pre-cuts. We're just the same. Quilters never change. We're always buying up this fabric and buying too much of it, right? But then when you're inside avoiding the flu and doing your patriotic duty, you don't have to go out to get fabric because you have so much. We're, you know, we're very smart, very smart. Okay, a um, few quick things. I'll come back to that. Um, oh, this is great. This is the last thing from the book, I promise. Patchwork quilts in style again. <laughs> from ni a net paper in 1910. To me, this smacks of the, these aren't your grandmother's quilts thing. You know, it's like, quilts are in style again and they're not your grandmother's quilts. Like, <sighs> we hate that. We know we hate that. And this is kind of the same deal. They're in style again, like they never, like they ever left. This is 1910. I mean, there was sort of the colonial revival thing going on, but I'm just saying this person is out of touch if they thought that they ever went out of style. Okay, uh, this is Sue Reich. What, isn't she just lovely? This is from her quilt folk photo shoot <clears throat> when we covered Connecticut last year. She's really lovely. And uh, I went into the quilt folk file to show you just a couple things <clears throat> because she brought out her World War II collection and I was editor of Quilt Folk at the time and I you know to talk about Sue Reg do a story on her I was like we have to have an angle here we have to have a specific one because she's done so much and she has a collection and she has done these books and she's a teacher and I think an appraiser or whatever so I was like you know Sue let's just focus on your World War II expertise because <laughs> you know what are we supposed to do here Sue you've done so much SJ, hello SJ, you better behave yourself. What's that block with the moons called on that patchwork back in style? And I, oh, oh, okay, we'll return to that. Don't let me forget. Um, so these are just a few of the wonderful things that Melanie Zacek took images of, took photographs of at Sue's house in Connecticut. Victory fabric, you know, she has, there's another one I, I grabbed from the, the big quilt folk holder. That's, isn't that charming and beautiful? Can you hear when Eric blows his nose? It's very loud. Um, a nun maker, my, my knitting group, which was my safe circle, finally got hit with COVID. All of us have been vaccinated, but several of the group tested positive. I've been quarantined just in case, but I haven't been sick at all. You know what? I took a COVID test yesterday. I was like, I don't know. I don't feel good, but it was negative and I woke up feeling better. I don't know. Fauci, Fauci said on a podcast the other day, we're all gonna be exposed. It's just the level of illness. Ugh, I hate it. Isn't this cool? This fabric is great. Victory fabric with little airplanes. Brilliant, brilliant. You know, you can't hear him. Yeah, okay, Raffle Waffle, sorry, excuse me. I just have to, I, I don't mean to be vulgar or crass, but I have to, I have to mention when he blows his nose, because of what you just said, Raffle, I think it does sound like a rude noise. Let's put it that way. And if that would ever happen to me, it won't. Let me just put that on the record. But I mean, that's what my fear is. I have to say, oh, there's Eric blowing his nose again, because yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a strange sound from, you know, off. So I had to, I have to say it. Anyway, reprint these plans. I know they're so great. Uh, and look at this. I mean, I started this thing of hanging quilts in trees for quilt folk photo shoots. I wasn't on this photo shoot, but 
I, I don't know if quilts and trees really work or not, but look at this. This is this is World War II. So I'm I'm reading ahead, right? Because we'll look at World War II quilts later. And guess what? Sue Reich is the expert. So we'll you know, and I've got all these books. I've got them all. But isn't this cool? I've got a couple detail shots that I pulled. Eric, what? Everyone can hear you blowing your nose. He loves that. I do too. Look at this. Now this is a high res photograph. I could get behind. Look at that. Oh, the red, the red is just, it's, it's sublime. It's sublime. It's the only word for it. Oh my good. Oh wow. Hey, this is great. Check this out. I just need this motif just following me around. Just graphically <laughs> at all times. Mm. It's awesome. It's so awesome. Mm. Mm hmm. You know what? It's nice to see this because, you know, it's kind of puckered in the middle, right? That's what it would look like if I did it. it I mean, that's that's the best it could possibly look if I did it. I just always call that out. I like call out these moments that aren't perfect because I don't know. I just people, I don't know. I, I should speak for myself. I just lose such confidence because I'm like, you know, this looks bad and I'm supposed to know everything or I'm supposed to know, you know, everything about quilt making. and. My COVID quilt, I love it so much, and it, you know, it ain't perfect. Okay, that's the last picture on that. It ain't perfect, and, and that's fine. We look at these quilt quilts all day on this show, and the perfect ones, you know, we don't look at perfect quilts that much on this show, because you know what? They're not as interesting. <laughs> Sorry, but they're not. Okay. Yes, it has the same fuzzy palms as my puppy quilt. Indeed, it does. The red, I know. Um, okay, Kitty Hannah, my great aunt has several photo books with pictures of all her quilts she's ever made. I wish I would have done that. Yeah, no kidding. I have some photos, but not all. We need to document our work. You know what? It's true. The other day, I just took pictures of our apartment because, I mean, I, I don't think to do that, you know, but like one day you're going to have these pictures of where you lived. Just just pictures, not of people in the, you know, not of you doing something or Eric, you know, blowing his nose, but just like where, where you were. And I think this is the same kind of thing. Like, what are the quilts I made? Oh, these quilts, you know, where was I living? Here. Like, have I ever taken a picture of the outside of my building? No. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm going to go straight into the Raja quilt because it's 1245. We got it. We got to roll. And I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling it. I don't want to, I don't want to take a break. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, I've already got things that we're going to do next time. So, <clears throat> pardon me. Are you ready for this? I know, I wish we could correct the chat too. I mean, it's like, unless you have some sort of, I mean, I know you can't, sorry, I'm pouring some, pouring some. it looks like I have my hand in the quilt, right? that there's a hole in the quilt and I'm like, hey, let me get this, let me get this. No, oh, there's Topo Chico in it. <laughs> um, yeah, there's no like autocorrect in a chat box, but we all know, you know, what, what people mean usually. Okay, can't stop, won't stop, kitty. All right, here we go, the Raja quilt. If, you, if you've never seen this, I mean, the story of this quilt is, is <laughs> <clears throat> so this is a radical okay estelle's got to keep yeah we we can't estelle witherspoon our moderator she actually won't let me take a break you all didn't see that but she said you can't you can't stop um <laughs> yeah i yes indeed um, so, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what, from what I'm going to read, because I copied out a lot of, a lot of different information. Okay, so I'm going to read from the National Gallery of Australia, from the website, okay? Um, just, I've got, I've got a book about it, sorry, hang on, hang on. Hang on. No, 
no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read the um, the description of the book. That we'll look at the cover of it because I think it's going to give the best overview. Okay, one of the world's most important textiles. Do you hear that? One of the world's most important textiles. The Raja quilt is a major focus of the National Gallery of Australia's textile collection. Australia. The quilt was made by women convicts on board the ship Raja while being transported from England to Van Diemen's Land, Tasmania, in 1841. While it is a compelling document of convict life, it is also an extraordinary work of art. A product of beauty from the hands of many women who, in the most abject circumstances, were able to work, work together <clears throat> to produce an object of hope. Mm. Remind me to go back to Sue Reich. Sorry, but I want to look at that block for you, SJ. I forgot, and we'll we'll go back to that, okay? Don't let me forget to raid someone and to do that, okay? From the moment the Raja quilt entered the collection of the National Gallery of Australia, its significance was obvious to the textile conservation staff. Part of a long-standing tradition spanning over a millennium I'm gonna zoom in on the patchwork here. Chintz, right, he's a chintz medallion. Oh, this picture is so good, oh my God. Part of a long-standing tradition spanning over a millennium, quilts evoke an interest that extends beyond the special place they hold in the history of women's artistic endeavors. Mm -hmm. They embody technical and decorative skills, patience, and most importantly, an individual story of time of the time and personality of its creator. The inscription on the Raja quilt confirms its importance in Australian history as a physical link to, to transportation and early European settlement. Uniquely, this quilt also holds significance for the thousands of Australians who are descendants of the 179 women prisoners who arrived in Tasmania on board the Raja in 1841. If you're just joining us, this quilt was made by 179 convicts aboard a ship from uh, England to Tasmania in 1841. Uh, the publication, The Raja Quilt, features details of the quilt showing var varying stitching, patchwork bands, brodery purse, uh, which is a French term to describe applique patterns, basically applique, um, brodery purse construction, and previously unseen reverse details. Interesting. I mean, where they got all the fabric, I mean, it's, they were coming from England, right? So they had, I mean, the people, <laughs> the people brought this fabric with them. I mean, I have questions, right? I have many, many questions. Um, and yes, I hope, so, so Marianne says, I hope the sewing and fellowship took their minds off the fear of being forced to move around the world, most likely not for very serious crimes. Yeah, probably, maybe for like, oh, I don't know getting pregnant out of wedlock or, you know, not being married. I mean, you know, we don't know. Um, this, look at these, the red flower is so great. I mean, flowers and birds and roses and patchwork. I mean, it's still like, we still care about these things, you know, they're no different. So here's something interesting too. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to this next image. Okay, so there's the book, there's the book. Who wrote it? Why don't I have that? And why isn't it on the cover? I'm not sure. But this was at uh, Amazon. Once I have my affiliate code, you can buy it through through me. Um, okay, this, so this is a replica. So the thing is, a lot of people have done, you know, um, their own versions or they've interpreted, they've interpreted the, the quilt. Um, <clears throat> hang on, I have, yeah, Lessa. So, so this, um, this is a, a version that was made, it's called Raja Quilt Revisited by Lessa Sigele, Sig um, and there's a pattern for it, and here's a detail of it. So you can buy the pattern on Etsy, I believe, 
um, Lessa is her name, L-E-S-S-A. Um, so the quilt, the quilt at the National Gallery is 126 inches square, by the way. Uh, Lessa's is 63 inches square. Um, and she has permission from the gallery. She got permission from the gallery to write this, you know, this version. Um, yeah, so here, I'll put the link in the chat in case you're interested. It's, it's, I mean, it's a great medallion quilt, right? Okay. Um, Molly, were you, did Estelle Witherspoon hold you back? <gasps> Molly squared, please refrain from spamming caps. Listen, I mean, you gotta, you gotta mind your P's and Q's. I hate that. I hate that you get flagged. You're really in trouble. I mean, you're, you're at the front of the class at this point. You know, you're in the bad chair. You were in the back of the room, but you, you know, Estelle's like, you can't handle it. So I'm gonna put you up in the front of the room so I can get, keep my eyes on you. And it's very unfair. It's unfair. SJ says, um, Mary, Mary, can you do a feature on that fabric from Australia? Is it Aboriginal prints or suggestive of Aboriginal art? The fabric with all the dots. Does anyone know what I'm thinking of? Yes. I mean, I do, absolutely. Um, the Aboriginal motifs um, for a while, especially, I remember my mom using a lot of that fabric in quilts because she went to Australia. So Aboriginal textiles, you know, vis-a-vis -vis quilts. So this woman did this. Okay, so then look at this thing. I've just got a couple more pictures. Um, so this woman, this woman, okay, check out this version. It's ceramic. This is a ceramic version of the Raja quilt. Isn't that insane? Isn't that insane? Okay, Marianne found it. Marianne. A woman's charity supplied the fabric and tools to the convicts on the boats before they sailed. And this quilt was sent back to the UK before being rediscovered in 1989. Really? And that's from Wikipedia. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The quilt nerd um, gold star has been, has been passed in this uh, chapter from Prairie Susie, who was our expert, to Marianne. Thank you for getting that. Um, could Quilt Folk maybe sponsor making this variation after doing Beatrix Potter? You know, it's not a bad idea, actually. Oh, and it could be a charity quilt. Like, it, it, that could be sort of the point of it, right? Um, but we're, uh, Jane Austen is next after Beatrix Potter. Okay, so pretty, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So, so yeah, so this is um, ceramic. Let me just read a little bit about this woman. And there's two, she's made two things. This is the center panel, I'll come back to it. And then this, this is called Ruffles on the Raja. It's shells, it's shells. Okay, I'm going back to this. What is, what is this all about? Um, her name is Byrne Emmerichs. The National Portrait Gallery, and this is from um, 2018. So the National Portrait Gallery and National Gallery of Australia present an exclusive experience to view the Raja quilt. This is an exhibit, one of the great treasures of the convict era. Um, let's see, da, 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 da. the Raja quilt was made, okay, we know, about, okay, yeah, yeah, the Raja quilt was made by women convicts on their way from England to Tasmania in 1841-42. The materials for the quilt were provided by Quaker philanthropists in London. Wait, wait, so Wikipedia, did they have that they were Quakers? They were Quakers. In the hope that the women would be quelled and calmed by the action of stitching. <gasps> After an intriguing international journey, aspects of which are still a mystery, the quilt was acquired by the National Gallery of Australia in 1989. Mm -hmm. Asked to create works for the National Portrait Gallery's, Gallery's exhibition, So Fine, Contemporary Women Artists Make Australian History, Melbourne artist Byrne Emmerichs has made a breathtaking suite of painted ceramic and shell pieces that tell the stories of the 182 women before they said 179, of the Raja and reprise the beauty of the quilt itself. Um, yeah, wow, in 2018, it's said to coincide with the first day. The Raja quilt, very rarely shown because of its fragility, will be available for close viewing uh, in an intimate study space of the National Gallery. Interesting, interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Jane Austen quote was really awesome. The setting for gifting a sub to a specific viewer is turned off. Really? 
That, oh, that's bad. That's bad. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, I didn't get a, a notification. Okay, that's that's not good. Um, who can you tell me who who gifted a sub? Can can someone? I don't know why I missed it. I gotta check that. Usually, it, you know, it pops up. Um, that's a big that's a big problem. I don't like that. Um, check alerts. Yikes! That's the worst. That's that's not cool. So who, so who can I? Who can we say thank you to? Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. No sub alert here. I know. I know. Word and bird nerd. You use the dreaded all caps. You better watch out. Okay. Okay. So so and then also burnt burnt emmerich. Just a couple other things because because it is it is time. It is the time has come. Actually, this is the last thing. Um, th this is by Bern Emmerich as well, and it just looks so interesting. So the unlikely story of Benelong and Philip is the second book in a series of books from Burbay Publishing, exploring the first settlement history, exploring first settlement history in Australia. Um, the extraordinary story about the friendship between Captain Arthur Philip and the Aboriginal Benelong is one of Australia's most important and intriguing stories, yet remains largely unknown. The background of first settlement in Australia, when the first fleet arrived, heightens the polarity between the two worlds of these two people, traditional Aboriginal culture and, va and values versus European culture and values. The book has been beautifully written by Michael Sedunery, complemented with the extraordinary artwork by celebrated Australian ceramic artist, Byrne Emmerichs. How cool, I know, I know, I wonder too, I was like, what's going on? With this so that sounds like a pretty awesome read right hmm you know another giveaway i could do is just to go back through and collect all the wonderful books that we talk about on this show and give away a huge box of them you know what i'm saying like this would be great i'd love to give this away well people the time is oh it's one o'clock on the dot that's crazy dogs dogs are not happy. Um, if, if somebody gifted a sub, I want to know so I can say thank you. You can hear those dogs. If you can hear Eric blowing his nose, you can hear those dogs. Okay, so everybody, I want to say thank you. Oh, wait, 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 we got to go back. We got to go back to Sue Reg. We just, we want to look at, real quick, we got to look at the thing that I said we were going to look at. Here's my folder. There's Sue Reg. Um, This is a thing that we want to look at. Look at that. Look how quick I was. SJ, you wanted some something. Oh, the small squares and half half squares. Small squares and half squares. They, they don't say anything about those little moons, but th that's really neat. That's really cool, huh? Um, and then someone asked about, oh, okay, I see. Interesting, interesting. Huh, interesting. Um, wontons. Yeah, they do look like little wontons, little dumplings. Um, oh, the raid, the raid. Okay, so thank you, everybody, if you're if you're taking off. Thank you so much for coming. But if somebody can look and see, what who should we raid? You, you're welcome, M. Sue John. It's always it's a pleasure. I just I just love doing this stuff. You know, I just love doing it. I am big. Oh, I am big. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can see the wontons though. Can you see the wontons? Um, hey, Sue. There's some rake. Okay, the raid. So find, he knows to quilts, find somebody to raid. Prairie Susie, I, my, my, if, I, I've said before, if there's one thing I'm good at, usually, it's content. There's so much I can't do, but I, 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 yeah, I like to, I like, I like making magazines, you know, editing magazines, because I can be like that, 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 and that. Yes, you know, put it all together. So here's the thing. So we, what we have to do is somebody find someone who's live streaming on Twitch right now, like who's sewing, like, and, you know, go to go and search like the crafts category or something. I mean, I guess I could do it too. Um, yeah, you're all carried over automatically. And, you know, obviously you can, you can stick around. It's not going to like announce your name or anything. It'll announce that I, you know, the quilt nerd show sent us all to that channel. Um, but you know, if you duck out, it's not going to be like, yes, you know, Susan R. Michael is in your chat room and she left, you know, immediately. It's not going to be like that. So what should we, who should we raid? You know, we've never done it before. This is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
Okay. Mm. Okay, we're gonna go with the first one I see. Awkwardish Panda. Mmm. Okay, good. Okay, so Awkwardish Panda appears to be cross stitching. A D and D die. Awkwardish Panda. Okay, so what I think I do. What I think I do. Mm, okay, I think I know how to do it. Hang on. So I go to this. Okay, hang on now. Hang on. I go over here. If I can get this figured out, I mean, if we do our first raid, that's so exciting. Okay, I go to this and I go to my channel. Yep, looks like Awkwardish Panda is, is and, and Miss Eleni says, some people who watch our channel also watch that channel. Okay, so here we go. I'm watching myself on my Twitch channel right now, which is very strange. It's okay. Um, and then I go down here. Okay. And over here. Whoop. Okay. Hang on. Just, just bear with me. So they're cross stitcher. I love that. They'll be like, look at all these quilters. Oh, I can't wait. Um. Okay. I go like this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Just, just, I mean, I, like I said, if you, you know. So what do you do there? Yeah, you just hang out. <laughs> you just hang out. You hang out if you want. I mean, it's just another show that's going on and you can, you can watch it. Okay, just hang on now. How do I, oh, wait. Read. Just a minute, just a minute. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? How do I raid on Twitch? How do I raid on Twitch? Here we go. How to use raids to start a raid. Oh, here we go. To start a raid. Look at this. Look at this. To start a raid. I just do, I do backslash raid on the thing followed by the name of the thing. Okay. 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 I think that's it. That's it. That's it. It's like a command in here. Raid. <gasps> raid channel. And now we put this in here and now it's going to happen. It's all happening. Oh, no, no, no. Awkwardish Panda. Okay. Uh, how do you spell awkward? Oh God. This is great, this is great, this is great, this is great. Awkwardish Panda. Okay, awkward-ish Panda. Y'all, I think I just, I think I just do it. Invalid username. I spelled it wrong. Hang on, hang on now. Hmm, 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 I mean, believe me. Remember when I said, you know, dead air makes me very nervous? We're almost there. Oh, okay, here, here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know how to do it. <sighs> Awkward-ish panda. Here, here, okay, here. Raid. Awkward-ish panda. Okay, 15, 23 viewers are ready to raid Awkward-ish panda in six seconds. <gasps> here it comes, here it comes, a four, three, two, one. Raid now. We're raiding. We're raiding. It's happening. We're raiding. We're, we're, we've raided you. We're raiding. Okay, okay. What's going to happen? Not me missing an entire stitch because I was talking to friends. I can fix that though. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, great. Hi. Aww. Yo, Mary Franz, welcome in, Raiders. Can I get a shout out for our Raider, please? Hi, hello. Yay. If you're new here, I'm Awkwardish Panda. I am very awkward. I'm roughly panda size little queer streaming on Twitch. Uh, I do a lot of makers and crafting, uh, makers and crafting being my big thing. Uh, today we are working on a, what's the worst that could happen cross stitch? I'll pull the picture of what we're working on back up. Yay. We're working on that cross stitch right there. It's gonna be very fun. It's from Game Over Stitches on Etsy. It's a great, pattern quilting politic hello welcome in Yay. hi brendan this is look at all the friends we have in today this very, is awesome very first raid the quilt nerd crew has come Ever. to say hi well hello quilt nerd crew Aww. welcome in Yay. we're just working on our cross stitch today we're hanging out um word and bird nerd hello okay proud hello been a busy day all right well no i know you get super busy with work so 